Welcome to the Epilepsy Foundation's Ask the Experts, a spotlight on non-epileptic events. My name is Patty Osborne Schaefer, Associate Editor and Community Manager for Epilepsy.com. I'm also an Epilepsy Nurse Specialist at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. I'm joined today by two excellent speakers. Dr. Slim Benbedis is Professor of Neurology and Director of Epilepsy at the University of South Florida in Tampa. He's also on the editorial board of Epilepsy.com. Dr. Lorna Myers is clinical psychologist and director of the PNES program at the Northeast Regional Epilepsy Group in New York and New Jersey. The purpose of uh, these sessions is to talk about what non-epileptic seizures are and what some of the discrepancies are about the different terms that people might uh, use for this, what might be causing them, and much more. Let's first get started by talking about what non-epileptic events are. The, the topic here and ask the most burning question and I'll address this to you Salim. What are non-epileptic seizures and what causes them? So non-epileptic seizures are episodes that resemble epileptic seizures but are not epileptic. Technically speaking, the term non-epileptic seizures is all-inclusive and includes all kinds of episodes that mimic seizures, but here we are focusing on psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, which is a subset of non-epileptic seizures, and those by definition are psychogenic, which means psychologically driven. In other words, stress, psychological uh, distress um, are the root cause of psychogenic seizures. So. When uh, actually, uh, let me turn to you uh, first, Salim, and then have Lona share our thoughts. When we talk about having a psychological basis to this, is that something that a person would, uh, that psychological stress or issue would maybe consciously aware of, or at more of a subconscious level? Well, that's a very important question. When we say psychogenic or psychological in origin, it means it's related to stress. By no means does it imply that the patient is faking. And in fact, the consensus is that the vast majority, 99% of patients with psychogenic non-epileptic events are not producing symptoms on purpose. So this absolutely does not mean faking or pretending. These are very real. They're just the result of psychological stress as opposed to physical damage to the brain or electrical abnormalities such as in epilepsy. Okay. Lorna, uh, many times people will say, well, I'm not feeling any stress. You know, how can you tell me this might be stress-related or psychological because I, I don't think that I'm having any of those issues. How would you respond to that? It's actually not uncommon that someone will say, I'm not feeling stress, or actually this is maybe the best time in my life. I'm actually doing better than I was before, and now I'm having these seizures. How can they be stress-related? It has to do with the different levels uh, in our mind, uh, where we have a conscious level, where we may be aware of what's going on, and then there may be other levels where we have thoughts or feelings that are not as... Uh, up in the surface of consciousness uh, but that are still having an effect uh, on us. So we might be watching TV and think that we're only watching a TV show but on a different level we may be having other thoughts for example uh, something about your work or something about your relationships and that uh, is at a lower level but still just as uh, as having as big an impact as uh, something that is conscious. Okay, so so I'm not necessarily going to be aware of the stress. So it's it's still can be affecting me or, or anyone uh, if they're not aware of it. Okay. Absolutely, um, you may not be aware of the stress, but you're still having an effect from it. In, in listening to this about the the stress relationship or the psychological basis, this raises a lot of concerns that that people. Um, have and that's there's so many different words used to describe non-epileptic events sometimes people use the term psychogenic or they use the term pseudo seizures or stress induced so um, Salem if you can take the first stab what do all these words mean the same thing or what's the best term to use 
Uh, yes, Patty, there's a lot of uh, discrepancies about that. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is important. Non-epileptic seizures is a global term, which technically just means non-epileptic, so anything but epilepsy, and that includes psychogenic and also other things. Now, within the psychogenic category, which is the one we are focusing on today, then, like, as you mentioned, there are different terms. There are differences of opinion among experts on this. Personally, I think we should stay away from the word seizures because it causes a lot of confusion with patients uh, as to whether seizures are organic or not, epileptic or not. So I would prefer, in the English language anyway, where the word seizure is associated with epileptic seizures, to avoid the particular word seizure, and I prefer psychogenic events or psychogenic episodes. Uh, but I do feel that the word psychogenic needs to be in the term for the reason that I said earlier. Not everything that is non-epileptic is psychogenic. For example, syncope or fainting are non-epileptic, but are not under the psycho psychogenic or psychological category. So the, the, the adjective, the qualifier psychogenic or psychological needs to be in the term. So something like psychogenic events or psychogenic episodes or psychogenic non-epileptic events, all of those are acceptable to me. Personally, I prefer to stay away from the word seizures, but I know some respectable colleague disagree, and uh, it's a gentleman's disagreement, if you will. I would prefer to not confuse patients by continuing to use the word seizures in that situation. Let me make one other point, which you mentioned. The term pseudo-seizures generally is not popular, and rightly so, because it sounds like these are not real. That's what pseudo means, and these are very real, as we all know, and disabling to patients. So that's a general agreement that the term pseudo-seizures should be abandoned, and it largely has been. Lorna, what are your thoughts on the terms that are used for this diagnosis? I agree with what uh, Salim uh, just said, just about on every single count. Uh, I do believe that uh, psychogenic does need to be in the term. Non-epileptic is descriptive. Events would probably be the best word to use rather than seizures. And obviously pseudo-seizures, because this is a psychological condition, because there is so much ignorance still, and even among the health profession, um, thinking that this is somehow consciously produced, uh, it ends up that using the word pseudo, which could be confused with fake, uh, is uh, very harmful to the patients. Uh, there is a movement now um, to uh, remove this term uh, among the PNES community, and there's a hashtag say no to pseudo uh, that has uh, started to be floated around. I hadn't heard that one. That's an interesting one. I, I like that. If I can so, make one more uh, comment, Patty, th this discussion of whether or not we should use the word seizures, by the way, uh, was a discussion we had in writing with our eminent colleague, Dr. LaFrance, and you all know him very well, friend of mine, and we had a respectful disagreement where he feels we should be using the word seizure, and I don't. Uh, that was published in, in the Green Journal, and it's an interesting discussion and shows you that we can have disagreements and, and, and uh, peaceful gentlemen's disagreement. But I, personally, I feel strongly that using the word seizures here creates confusion with patients and families. Yeah. So on, on that note, I think uh, you raised a very important part about we have to be clear to people with the events or seizures and their families of what they're dealing with and what they're not. And so often we find that people don't really know, they're, they're not properly diagnosed or it takes years before they learn uh, what it is that's really happening. So Salem, could you first talk about how do we diagnose psychogenic events? So the, the patient typically presents with episodes that look like seizures and they are usually treated as if they had seizures, which is probably the safe thing to do. Once the treatment for seizures, epileptic seizures, doesn't work, then the suspicion comes that maybe these, is, these are not epileptic seizures. And the only way to this day, the only way to make a firm diagnosis, a definite diagnosis, is with EEG video recording that allows us to record the episodes in question, the seizure-like episodes in question, with both video, so we can see the clinical event, and the EEG, the electroencephalogram, the brain waves. And by correlating the two, 
most of the time, almost always, we can confidently determine whether the episodes are epileptic or not, and if they are not epileptic, whether they are psychogenic or not. That's really the only way to be certain if an episode is epileptic or not, and if it may be psychogenic. Lorna, so this raises the question that many people have, is that they find that the doctors or nurses or psychiatrists that are treating them are afraid to tell them what it's really about. And, and so why are people so reluctant to say that there might be a psychological cause, and here's another way of treating that? I don't know if it's that the physicians or the treating professionals are afraid to tell them that there's a psychological cause. I think that there is a considerable amount of confusion in the health field uh, about PNES. Um, and what ends up happening with uh, many of, of these patients is that they bounce back and forth from neurology to psychiatry or psychology and back to neurology. Uh, there tends to be in the psych field uh, misinformation about PNES. Uh, there tends to be a sense of um, uh, doubt uh, about the diagnosis itself and so if a patient comes to the office with the diagnosis of PNES uh, there is often uh, still a question in the psychiatrist or the psychologist's mind uh, is this really a psychological condition and um, should I not uh, refer this patient back to neurology if they happen to have a seizure an episode in my office um, so Primarily, I would say that uh, there needs to be a lot more education uh, in psychiatry, in psychology, and in the rest of the uh, mental health uh, professions uh, about the condition, that it is uh, absolutely a psychological condition, that it is within the scope of practice of psychiatry and psychology, and that uh, this is something that they can absolutely treat uh, as they would treat many other uh, mental health conditions that that are treated in a psychiatrist or a psychologist's office. So are the educational needs are for all of us in, in all fields of epilepsy, neurology, mental health, as well as for you know people with epilepsy and their families. So, so I want to turn to uh, the psychiatry field a little bit and say is PNES considered a diagnosis of its own, or can pe pe people that have PNES also have other uh, psychological conditions, have problems with anxiety, depression, or PTSD, for example? PNES is uh, something that you might see in terms of seeing episodes, seeing behavioral episodes that resemble seizures. But for the most part, there is always a psychiatric condition uh, underlying that. Um, so you would either have, most typically, depression, anxiety disorders, and like you mentioned, PTSD in around 50%, uh, uh, some of the numbers vary, uh, of patients with PNES. So um, when you are treating someone with PNES, uh, you obviously have the seizures, the events, um, they're very visible, but for the most part you are treating a psychological condition that is underlying, um, which would be depression, anxiety, or PTSD. So that takes us into a section on treating PNES. Thank you Dr. Ben Benice and Dr. Myers for your time and expertise. I'm, I know I've learned a lot and I, I'm sure our listeners have about what non-epileptic events are and some of the controversies surrounding this. And thank you to our listeners. We hope you found the information very helpful. If you've got questions or concerns, please feel free to contact the Epilepsy Foundation. Our 24-7 helpline is open 24-7. You can call uh, for English speaking to 1-800-332-1000 or for Spanish speaking 866-748-8008 or visit us online at www.epilepsy.com slash helpline. Thank you very much.